Hi friends, we are back with another video on Waiting for Godot Tragic Comedy in Two Acts by the Irish writer Samuel Beckett, which was first published in 1952 as an attendant Godot and was premiered in 1953, in which two characters, Vladimir and Estrogen, are waiting for Godot, who never appears. Before that, if you didn't subscribe this channel, please subscribe it and hit the bell icon so that you won't miss the updates from this channel. So, let us discuss about the play and the playwright. Samuel Beckett, whose full name is Samuel Beckley Beckett, was born on 13th April 1906 and died on 22nd December 19. 89. He was an Irish novelist, playwright, short story writer, theatre director, poet and literary translator. He was a resident of Paris for most of his adult life and had written in both French and English. He had his works offer a bleak, tragic comic outlook on human existence, especially black comedy and gallows humor, and he became increasingly minimalist in his later career. He was a key figure. He has been considered one of the key figures in Martin Eslin's The Theatre of the Absurd. Won Nobel Prize in Literature in 1969 and his major works are Murphy, The Unnameable, Waiting for Godot, Endgame and Crab's Last Tape. The Theatre of Absurd The Theatre of Absurd is a post-World War II designation for particular plays of absurdist fiction written by a number of primarily European playwrights in the late 1950s. It is a post-World War II designation and the place of absurdist fiction and especially by European playwrights and it was written late 1950s. Martin Eslin had termed or related this place on the theme absurd literature. Existentialist philosopher Albert Camus' assessment in his essay, The Myth of Sisyphus, that the human condition is essentially absurd or devoid of purpose, has become base for this theatre. The major or key figures are Samuel Beckett, Eugene Ernesto, Ryan Janet, Harold Pinter, and etc. The theatre is based on the idea of existentialism that is, the value of life had to be or meaning of life had to be found out by human itself by his experiences. 
the play focus not on logical acts realistic occurrences or traditional character development but it centers on human beings trapped in an incompre incomprehensible world subjected to any occurrence the theme of incomprehensibility that is not uh, able to understand or inadequacy of language is peculiar characters of the theater of absurd Beckett's style of writing Beckett had thrown out most of the rules of conventional writings that is conventional characteristics of plot character and point of view had been thrown out by Samuel Beckett and one of another character is his simple style and overly simplified settings can be seen in the work and the dialogue and sentences are short and choppy and one uh, another character is prosaic style and stream of consciousness and use of repetition the play waiting for godo it was beckett's first play written originally in french in 1948 and was published in 1952 in french as en attendant godo first premiered at a tiny theater in paris in 1953 began it was with this play that beckett's association with the theater of absurd started the play waiting for godo is true innovation in drama and the theater of absurds first theatrical success the play is a play about waiting two tramps are waiting for godo and its defies traditional dramatic structure and plot the play include themes of the human condition absurdism and nihilism and friendship it is a play about human suffering involved in human existence the play waiting for godo was written immediately after world war 2 at the age of depression due to this depression era or world war 2 people were facing a lot of problems and mysteries regarding their lives the play is also considered as one of the best absurdist plays suffering means the disruption of the normal functioning of life suffering means what disruption or impediment of in the normal functioning of life suffering includes waiting shortage of food homelessness physical and mental pains miseries suicide etc samuel beckett mentioned these facts in his play waiting for godo the play is either about humanity waiting for a savior that does exist to return as it is religious or it could be about the hopelessness of humanity waiting for a savior that doesn't exist 
and therefore will never come or the easiest of possibilities that waiting really has no theme at all actually the place has three dimension that is one may be humanity waiting for a savior that does exist who will return or hopelessness of humanity waiting for a savior actually that savior doesn't exist and therefore will never come or the third possibility is what it is the easiest, easiest possibility that waiting really has no theme at all. The general attitude expressed throughout is the hopelessness or possibly the meaninglessness of life. General attitude may be what? Hopelessness or meaninglessness of life as the play itself is being termed as absurd play. Humanity's purpose is simply to wait out its existence and waste out its existence until the second coming. The play Waiting for Godot is a play that presents conflict between living by religious and spiritual beliefs. As we have already mentioned, it is a play about waiting for a savior that does exist and will come and living by an existential philosophy as we have another two options that it is waiting for a savior that does not exist or waiting has no theme at all. The existential philosophy is what which is a philosophy that asserts, asserts that it is up to the individual to discover the meaning of life. It is the role of individual to discover the meaning of life through personal experience in the earthly world. Characters in the play are 1. Ratmir. He is one of the two main characters of the play. Estragen calls him Didi. The boy who comes at the end of the day addresses him as Mr. Albert. He seems to be the more responsible and mature of the two main characters that is Ratmir and Estragen. He is symbol of distress due to World War II. Then Estrade, the second of the two main characters and Ratmi calls him Gogo. He seems weak and helpless and he is always looking for Ratmi's protection. He has a poor memory as Latmir has to remind him in the second act of the events that happened the previous night. Then Pozo. Pozo passes by the spot where Latmir and Estrogen are waiting. He provides a diversion for the play. In the second act, he is blind. He does not remember meeting Latmi and Estragen the night before. Then Lucky, he is Pozo's slave and he carries Pozo's bag and stool. In act first, he entertains by dancing and thinking. And in the act second, he is dumb. Then the boy who appears at the end of each act to inform Latmi and Estrogen that Godot will not be coming that night. In the second act, he insists that he was not there the previous night. Godot, whom Latmi and Estrogen wait unendingly and never appears in the play, Name and character are often thought to refer to God. Summary of the play 
say mere summary or what a short summary of the play two men Latme and estrogen meet near a tree they converse on various topics and reveal that they are waiting there for a man named Godo while they wait two other men enter Pozo is on his way to the market to sell his slave Lucky he pauses for a while to converse with Latme and estrogen Lucky entertains them by dancing and thinking and Pozo and Lucky leave after Pozo and Lucky leave a boy enters and tells Latme that he is messenger from Godo he tells Latme that Godo will not be coming tonight but that he will surely come tomorrow Latme asks him some questions about Godo and the boy departs after his departure Latme and estrogen decide to leave but they do not move as the curtain falls the next night Latme and estrogen again meet near the tree to wait for Godo Lucky and Pozo enter again but this time Pozo is blind and Lucky is dumb Pozo does not remember meeting the two men the night before they leave and Latme and estrogen continue to wait Shortly after the boy enters and once again tells Latme that Godo will not be coming he insists that he did not speak to Latme yesterday after he leaves estrogen and latme decide to leave but again they do not move as the curtain falls ending the play then silence in waiting for godo as we know in traditional theories silence represents what passiveness negativity and absence of speech but in this theater of absurd or absurd place silence has wider relevance as harold pinter says i think that we communicate only too well in our silence in what is unsaid and that what takes place is a continual evasion desperate re argued attempts to keep ourselves to ourselves so silence has wider significance the silence presents the catastrophic world after second world war the pause is and silence is in the play depicts what sterile and a tragic atmosphere and situation condition human experiences the silence is actually the result of the disintegration of the institution of language so language in language silence also has its own place to indicate lack of communication and failure of conversation between characters the silence can be used to indicate lack of communication and failure of conversation that is nothing is also interpreted silence carries meaning silence can also serve an indicator of unsuccessful communication it is particularly suited to sounding out unclear relationships between speakers so silence can bring out unsuccessful communication and failure in relationship and communication or conversation the play waiting for godo stress man's alienation that is his alienation from other human beings as let me say something estrogen says i am trying but long silence let me in anguish say anything at all estrogen what do we do now it what me wait for godo estrogen ah then silence this extract they convey messages as speeches and help the character to hide his real thoughts 
silence has an emotive function the silence in the play express characters what sadness and loneliness and contribute to play's general atmosphere of sadness void or blank situation loneliness and nothingness latmir and estrogen try to overcome silence it reminds them of void of their lives long silence let me say something see again i am try long silence let me help me estrogen i am try silence estrogen that is the idea let's contradict each other they fail to avoid silence they fail to avoid silence play is filled with silence see uh, their communication fail to avoid silence but it is been filled with silence their silence indicate the emptiness of modern life conversation as as spezia suggests what in waiting for godo the catalysts of speech are silences and pauses the very elements which undermine the emotions to which the characters lay claim and which prevent them occupying any decisive area of commitment silence break breaks the continuity of words and conveys meaning in its totality estrogen they have to talk about it while radmi says to be dead is not enough for them estrogen it is sufficient silence again silence they make a noise like feathers like leaves like ashes like leaves then long silence again let me say something estrogen i am try long silence again see it is been filled with several silences and the play shows beckett's mastery bind together two extreme opposites that are words and silence he bind together they are trying to fill their occasion with uh, words but there are long silences the play abounds in silence as beckett himself confess silence is pouring into this play like water into a sinking ship